video series, Miss Kaylee, Miss Leah, and I are going to be sharing some of our favorite story time books with you. So today it's my turn. I'm going to share one of my all time favorite story time and picture books. It's about a sloth. It's called Sparky, and it's by Jenny Ophill and Chris Applehans. Sparky. I wanted a pet, a bird or a bunny or a trained seal. My mother said no to the bird, no to the bunny, no, no, no to the trained seal. I asked her every day for a month until she finally said, you can have any pet you want as long as it doesn't need to be walked or bathed or fed. I made her a promise. Then I went to the school librarian. Mrs. Nickelbaum, who knows everything in the world, pointed me to the volume S of the Animal Encyclopedia. This is what I found. Sloth. Sloths have been known to sleep more than 16 hours a day. They sometimes hang upside down in trees, barely moving for long periods of time. They survive by eating leaves and drinking the dew that collects in them. It is said that sloths are the laziest animals in the world. My sloth arrived by express mail. He was about the size of a medium-ish dog with a flat nose and a monkey face. There he is. My mother wasn't happy, but a promise is a promise, I said. Sparky, I decided, that will be your name. I took him outside to his tree. Sparky went right to sleep. I made him a sign and put it under the tree. Guard sloth, enter at your own peril. That means like enter at your own risk. It was two days before I saw him awake. Sleeping, sleeping, awake, snuggled. He didn't know a lot of games, so I taught him some. We played King of the Mountain and I won. We played hide and seek and I won. We played Kung Fu Fighter, and I won. We played Statue, and Sparky was very, very good. That weekend, Mary Potts came over to investigate. Let me show you what Mary Potts is like. This is a picture of her room. This says, Excellence in Permission Slip Compliance. That means she always gets her permission slip signed. Most likely to chew closed mouthed in the lunchroom. She always keeps her mouth closed. Best fire drill liner upper. Seems like she's pretty perfect. Before she even took off her coat, Mary said, let me see your new pet. I had some worries, but I took her out to Sparky's tree. He opened his eyes and looked at us. Then he closed them again. I rubbed his belly, but it was too late. We stood there for a while watching him sleep. His fur ruffled gently in the breeze. I feel sorry for you, Mary said. My cat can dance on her hind legs, and my parrot knows 20 words, including God and ice cream. Sparky knows tricks too, I told her, but she didn't believe me. The next day, I made a poster and nailed it to the tree outside Mary Potts' house. Train sloth extravaganza. Countless tricks to mystify you, just seven days away. All week, we trained in secret. Sometimes Sparky slept through practice and I had to poke him awake. Sometimes he forgot what he was doing and we had to start over. Sometimes he took so long to fetch that I went inside and had dinner while I waited. I was starting to think the poster had been a mistake, but a promise is a promise. On the day of the train sloth extravaganza, my mother set up lawn chairs. Three people came to see Sparky perform. My mother, Mary Potts and Mrs. Edwin, the crossing guard. Mrs. Edwin approved of Sparky because he never ran in the street. Do I look like a ringmaster? I asked my mother. You look very interesting, she told me. I put a little glitter on Sparky just before the curtain went up. I kept wishing I had written two tricks on the poster instead of countless tricks. Play dead, Sparky, I said, and he did. Roll over, I said, and he didn't. Speak, I command. We all waited and waited. Speak, I said. Sparky looked at me. The only thing you could hear was the wind in the trees. 
He has a very pretty coat, doesn't he? Mrs. Edwin said finally. You can't just invent a brand new pet like that, Mary told me. A pet no one's ever even had. My mother came out with lemonade and cookies, but everyone said they had to be going. Sparky and I watched them. Then my mother made me put the chairs away. Afterward, I gave Sparky a cookie, but he ate it so slowly that I took it back again. It was getting dark out. I looked at him and he looked at me. You could hear all the neighborhood dogs barking. I reached over and tagged him on his claw. You're it, Sparky, I said. And for a long, long time, he was. The end.